Well, joining us now is Waleed Faris. He's a Trump foreign policy advisor. Good to have you with us. How much of a, a radical break or shift in foreign policies does Donald Trump represent now going forward, do you think? Well, number one, um, as a president-elect, he will have to assemble his teams. He will have to also communicate with the actual departments. He's going to be the chief executive. So he had a few of us, advisors and some teams to help them, but the, he's going to have at his service the entire administration. Of course, he's going to be coordinating with the sitting president between now and, and January. So there's going to be an interim time before he is really uh, seated in the White House and, and uh, leading our foreign policy. He's going to hit the ground. His administration will hit the ground with four ongoing wars to begin with in Libya, in Syria, devastating war, in Iraq, in Yemen, and of course the uh, tense relations with, uh, with Iran and other issues in the Middle East. And of course you would have to regulate again uh, these relationships with Russia, with all what we know about here. Some concerns that were part of his speeches with regard to uh, NATO, Europe, uh, Korea, and China. So. He has a lot of baggage to deal with in foreign policy. He does indeed. He Allow me to jump in, Mr. Farris, and try and pin you down on some of those issues. Do you see any downgrading of support for the Syrian opposition and a push to perhaps uh, move closer to Russia when it comes to the issue of Syria? He, I know he made statements, and many have expressed concerns to us, the advisors, including from media and also from uh, politicians across the Atlantic. But now he's the president, and the difference is going to be that he is going to be updated and, up, you know, and, and informed by our agencies. He didn't have that information before. Also, we'd have to have a dialogue with the U.S. Congress, with the two parties. And he just pledged, as you just heard, that he's not going to be going by himself. He's going to have to work with all the components of our politics. Having said that, he may have a different approach to the Syrian conflict. The Syrian conflict today is very different. There is an influence of Russia. He'll have to take this into, uh, into consideration. There are components on the ground. He knows that the Assad regime is not going to be legitimate if it tries to go back to all of Syria. But at the same time, he doesn't want to wage a military war against the Assad regime. So all these components he spoke about when he was a candidate, it's going to be updated when he will be uh, a president, and we'll see from there on. It's interesting you use the word updated, which reading between the lines, one would assume that means that that's political spin for actually he might take a different position and not downgrade the support for some of the Syrian opposition or might not be as close to Russia as he suggested in the campaign. Am I reading you correctly? I don't want to mislead the reading, but it is something closer to he made positions that were based on what he knew then. For example, that um, there are elements within the opposition that are close to al-Nusra. I'm just giving an example. Uh, but now, if he will be updated so that how can we do as Americans with our allies in the region? He's going to be talking to allies in the region, Arab moderate allies, the Europeans, going to be speaking with them. What can we do to you know, fix right. that thing? So right. there will be multiple scenarios, and there he will have to decide what to do. Let's uh, shift a bit. Is there still going to be a wall built? That I cannot answer because that's a pledge, like the pledge of President Obama, for example. There will be no wars here. There will be a wall. We'll, we'll see about that. But what, what will you be advising him? To be. Uh, will you be telling him to go ahead and build that wall with Mexico and get Mexico to pay for it? I am an advisor on foreign policy. I don't know if we're going to be in the administration well, or not. That's surely a foreign policy issue as well as a, a domestic immigration one. It, it is if it's built on the Mexican side, but it's going to be, according to his statement, built on an American side, and it's not going to be uh, meddling with Mexican affairs. He actually spoke about it with, the, with President Nieto, but let's, I, I would recommend that we we'll wait until he is becoming a president, and then we'll see how he's going to be dealing with this issue because one of the scenarios is that if there is a strategic cooperation with the Mexican government, which I believe will happen, then what kind of war we're going to have, what kind of border we're going to have, it may be a positive border with economic incentives. So many things could change. All right. What about renegotiating some of those trade deals? Will you be advising him to go ahead on that with China and Mexico, for example? I am not going to be advising on these because there are advisors on international economics. Uh, he's going, but I, we got a lot of inquiries by these countries, even during the campaign. 
And the answer is that he is going to sit down, go to ground zero with Japan, with South Korea. Let's talk about the Pacific. He's going to be sitting down with the Chinese. Look, if you read his past, he's different from other politicians. He is the author of the art of the deal. If he can get things done through deals, he will try to do it. What about keeping uh, U.S. troops in Korea, the level of support for some of America's allies in Asia? those troops there to stay? This will be in function of two things. Number one, if the threat is there, continue to be there. If he can work something with the Chinese to make sure to contain North Korea, and maybe Chinese and Russians, who have borders with North Korea, is one. And what kind of negotiations on the financial level is going to have with South Korea? That, I am sure, he will engage with the South Koreans for the presence of these forces, and even with the Japanese for the expenses of uh, you know, what we're doing in Japan. But again, one more time, too early, he'll have to have the input of the administration, the full administration and Congress. It is early, but we do want to get your thoughts uh, as a person who is close to now President-elect Trump on some of these important policy issues. What about the Muslim visa ban? Will he be um, implementing his uh, campaign promise for an immediate ban on Muslims entering the United States? No, his vice president-elect now has clarified this clearly by saying there is no ban on Muslims coming to the United States. Mr. Trump himself, during the campaign, you know, made all the efforts. He made that one tweet and statements in December. Then all the next nine months, including a speech in March, a speech in August, we're about to reach out deep in the Arab and Muslim world and work with these countries against the terrorists, well, isolating the terrorists and collaborating with them. So it's hard to see how you, he's going to put say a that, ban. Uh, for, forgive me for Muslim jumping world. in, but you, you say that, but you one question is whether people surrounding Mr. Trump like yourself, with all due respect, will be advising him to take more conciliatory and harmonious approach um, uh, to some of these issues, given, if you allow me to raise the, uh, the, your particular background, for example, according to the Washington Post on the 22nd of March 2016, uh, quoted you as, as being a person who was, quote, once a leading ideologue in an armed Christian faction, uh, which it goes on to say, which was accused of committing atrocities. Any regrets about being associated with the Lebanese forces militia, which was accused of atrocities? Okay. This is basically the work of what we call the Islamist lobby, the pro-Iranian and pro-Muslim brotherhood. So once we're It was in the Washington Post, sir. Pandora box. The Washington Post author is a supporter of the Iran deal, Ishan Tarur. If you want to open that Pandora box, then we're going to talk about the entire operation of the Muslim Brotherhood network in Washington and of the Iranian regime network, and then go to who is serving them and who is supporting them and why they are spreading these ideas. All false, of course. But also the Mother Jones article, are they supporters of the Muslim Brotherhood when they published the 2011 October 27th investigation? Um, that said that you personally worked with the uh, fifth bureau of the Lebanese forces that practiced psychological warfare. I mean, people draw parallels to the sort of what they would see as divisive psychological warfare statements of Donald Trump and the backgrounds of people who are advising this him. Are they also, all, <laughs> are they also all, supporters of the all. Muslim Brotherhood? To the, no, all of the statements is rubbish. Second, Mother, uh, Mother Jones has been perceived and is supportive of the Iran deal. I mean, they have, look at the Mother Jones archives. I mean, if you want to discuss that matter, I could name you all the networks that operates for them. And of course, they have the same talking points, which were absolutely uh, crippled by articles coming from Lebanon saying, what are these publications talking about? He has never been an advisor so, to so these you, militias. You, you never, advised, you never the advised the Lebanese forces, the photos that they published of you, a press conference in uh, 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 of uh, 1986, you're denying all of that is correct. I was, uh, you, it is very strange that in the Western media we see those elements. We go to the Lebanese media for 15 years. What do we see? That I published seven books, that I founded a social democratic party. Yeah, sorry, sir, you're saying that's that incorrect. You're denying that. Labor. Of course not. Of course not. I was in charge of foreign affairs. I'm not, div uh, an adv I was not an advisor. And the actual advisor, by the way, let's have it fun here. The actual advisor of the Lebanese force, Dr. Tufik Hindi, himself published an interview here in America and said, why do you call Ferris an advisor? I was the right. advisor. So it, it is all, okay. it's all propaganda on behalf of the Iranian regime and the Ikhwan.
people have networks, including media networks. All right, well, thank you so much for talking to us. Walid Faris there, advisor to President-elect Trump.